What's up guys, welcome back once again to the Gaming Careers YouTube channel. Today's video we're going to be covering a topic that is so often overlooked but is incredibly important. I am constantly hearing about gamers, streamers and even esports professionals who are having to retire or take serious action just to fix an injury that could have been prevented from the very start. In this video we're going to be covering how you can set up your streaming station in a more ergonomic way so that you can prolong your gaming career and prevent long-term injuries. I know that some of you might not think it's the most exciting topic to cover in a video but it's just so incredibly important and it really just takes 10 minutes to make some big changes and greatly reduce your risk of a long-term injury. Now there are several different topics that need to be covered when we're talking about health as a streamer. There's obviously what we're going to be covering today which is the ergonomics, things like your desk, your seat, your monitor height, your keyboard and mouse and how those should be best positioned for your body. Uh, but there's also things about exercise, there's things about diet, caffeine, as well as the massive topic which is mental health. And all of those we're going to be covering in future videos. This video is specifically going to be talking about the ergonomics of your streaming setup. So we'll get to all of the setup, monitors, desk, keyboard, mouse, your chair, and the positioning of all those items to be best for you after a quick message from our sponsor. Nerd or Die have just released their latest stream pack called Predator, which is the perfect design choice for those of you who are streaming Apex Legends. The Predator pack offers an incredible amount of customization for widgets, color options, and animation design. Check it out along with dozens of other designs using the link in the description below and bag yourself an extra 10% off at checkout. So to get started, let's talk about what is ergonomics and why does it matter? To put it as simply as possible, ergonomics is about creating an environment that reduces the stress on the body and improves comfort by helping us to assume the most optimal posture. In these positions, our bodies and muscles are able to maintain an upright position with as little work as possible, thus minimizing the risk of injury, pain, stiffness and overall poor health. So the four main aspects of your streaming setup that we're going to be adjusting for ergonomic design is your monitor, your keyboard and mouse, your chair and finally your desk. So let's get started with your monitor and talk about monitor height. Now ideally you want to raise your monitor up so that your eyes are level with the top 25% of the monitor's display. You should also, if possible, slightly tilt back the monitor. This ensures that you don't need to make large neck movements to be able to look at all four corners of your monitor. Many games nowadays put vital HUD information in the bottom or the top corners which you need to constantly be looking at. Setting your monitor up in this way allows some of the more common areas of the monitor to be less visually straining. Now the dangers of setting your monitor too high is that it will require you to use your upper neck to look up and monitors that are set too low, which is the more common issue, is that you're gonna get that forward head posture that is so often associated with gamers. Now in terms of distance, there's a balance that needs to be made for the distance that you sit away from your monitor. You want to sit far enough away that you can see all four corners of your monitor like we discussed without requiring too much head movement but you also don't want to sit so far away that you lose the detail from your game which may be required for you to perform at your best. A general rule of thumb is that your monitor should be roughly an arm's length away and you can plus or minus the length of your hand here so somewhere around an arm length away from where you are sitting. Now most monitors as you buy them, the stands that they come with don't usually offer that much adjustability, certainly in terms of height which is the biggest problem here. So if you have some old textbooks lying around from university, from school, it's worth stacking them and putting them underneath your monitor stand to raise it to that uh, eye level that I talked about. For more flexibility and a cleaner looking setup, I'd recommend picking up some VESA mounts for your monitor which will allow you to adjust height as well as the vertical and horizontal tilt and even possibly the orientation if you ever wanted to use a vertical monitor for Twitch chat or something similar. They can be found for relatively cheap on sites like Amazon and they come in various configurations for single, double or even triple monitor setups. I'll link some of my favourites that I have used before in the description of this video. So if you do want to check out a VESA mount, do go and look at the description and check out some of the links I have there. The only thing you need to consider is that the monitor that you have bought, is it VESA mount compatible? And if so, what is the dimensions? Usually monitors are either VESA 100 or VESA 75. And that just means how far the distance between the screw holes is 100 millimeters or 75 millimeters. So just check that info before purchasing one. Okay, so monitor done. Now let's look at the keyboard and mouse. and the vast, vast majority of injuries that come to esports professionals or streamers or just gamers in general 
are things like carpal tunnel or RSI and they're completely related to the wrist. And before we look at why, I just want to quickly cover, I do have a big scar on my wrist and I know I was going to get some comments about it. Um, it wasn't from a gaming related injury, it was actually from a skiing injury um, and I had some surgery on it a few years ago. Uh, but I just wanted to clear that up in case anybody thought I had any of these injuries like carpal tunnel or RSI and had surgery to fix it. It has meant, however, that I am even more careful and aware of my wrist position when gaming. So the most important thing to implement here is that you are holding your mouse in a neutral position. So what that means is that your wrist isn't rotated either towards your thumb or rotated towards your pinky or little finger. Those major injuries like carpal tunnel or RSI that I talked about that happen to streamers and uh, esports professionals or just gamers that spend a lot of time sat in front of their computer, they usually come from having a non-neutral starting point for their mouse. Although it doesn't seem like much, a small extra rotation when multiplied many times over months or years of gaming can cause painful and restrictive wrist injuries which can prevent you from gaming in the future. So giving it just a little bit of thought to your mouse and its position now might be very worthwhile investment. Prevention is always better than cure and you don't want to look back in 5 or 10 years time and wish you'd taken more care of your wrist and hand. In terms of actually how you hold your mouse, I'm sure some of you may have heard of the three main mouse grips. Palm grip, where most of your palm and the under part of your hand is in contact with the mouse. Claw grip, where you have a, a gap between the mouse and your hand and you're actually using the ends of your fingers to uh, click on the buttons. And finally, fingertip grip, where less of the mouse is in contact with your hand, your hand's a little bit further back, and again, you're using your fingertips to click the buttons. How you grip your mouse is largely down to the size of your hands, the size and the shape of your mouse, and just general preference. The claw and fingertip grip styles will use more muscles than the palm grip, and therefore do have a slightly higher risk of injury. But as long as you're remembering to position your wrist neutrally, these increased risks are minimal and so your grip style shouldn't really be a deciding factor. I would however recommend that you get a mouse that is right for your hand and not just using something because it was cheap or because it was on a special deal. So I will recommend a channel down in the description below, it's called Rocket Jump Ninja. It's a guy who reviews pretty much every gaming mouse available on the market and really goes in depth. It's been a fantastic resource for me, I've watched him for many years and uh, I'll leave a link down in the description below if you're interested in looking for a new mouse and wondering what will fit your hand best. Now this same whole thing about the positioning of your wrist also applies to your other hand which is going to be touching your keyboard. Make sure your wrist is neutral, so if you are using the WASDA like most games are set to default as your movement keys on your keyboard, imagine a straight line running up your wrist and along your middle finger to the W key. That neutral position will help prevent injuries. Okay, so moving on to the chair that you use for your gaming or streaming setup. And I'm sure you're aware there are countless companies now making these gaming chairs and they sponsor streamers, they sponsor esports organization, they even sponsor tournaments. So some tournaments will all have the exact same kind of gaming chair uh, that the professionals are using. A quick word of warning though, these gaming chairs, they aren't all created equal and some of them uh, even though they look exactly the same, can be constructed from really poor materials, poor quality foam, and can actually be detrimental to the ergonomics and how, how you're sitting. Take for example some of the best selling gaming chairs on Amazon, and although they look similar to those that you see on the eSports stages, they are in fact made of wood and really cheap foam. I myself use a chair from Noble Chairs, it's called the Hero, and while it is on the more expensive end, I am sitting for the majority of my week and I wanted something that provided some lumbar support as well as having some real office accreditation behind them. Really all I want to advise is that you take a grain of salt with you when you are shopping for a gaming chair on Amazon. In most cases you'd be better off getting a traditional office chair from somewhere like Ikea for a similar price. And sure you might not think that they look as cool as the ones on Amazon but sitting on a wood frame with some poor quality foam construction for 50 plus hours a week won't do you much good. Okay, so what height should you actually have your chair set at? Well, your chair height should allow your feet to be flat on the floor and your knees creating a 90 degree angle so that both your knees and your hips are in line with each other. If your chair is set too low, causing your knees to be above your hips, or your chair is set too high, causing your hips to be above your knees, you're going to be directly affecting the position of the lower back and pelvis, which can restrict blood flow. If you are a smaller person and struggle to get your feet flat on the floor for your desk height, then you should purchase a footrest that raises your feet and allows you to keep them flat. 
Now, most chairs nowadays allow you to have some sort of freedom in changing the angle of the backrest, and you want to have that set somewhere between 90 and 110 degrees. Much of the advice written online recommends sitting directly upright at 90 degrees, and that is personally what I find to be most comfortable. Many chairs nowadays come with some form of lumbar support, so if you do find it more comfortable to have a slight recline when sitting, just make sure you're supporting the natural curvature of your lower back properly. Finally, if your chair allows you to have some adjustment of your armrests, you should be positioning those to allow your shoulders to be relaxed and your elbows comfortably supported at 90 degrees. If you set your armrests too high, your shoulders are gonna be shrugged, possibly giving you a stiff neck. Ideally, the armrest should be at the same height as your desk, which allows your elbow to rest while still having full control to make large sweeps with your mouse if you do use a low sensitivity when gaming like I do. Now, probably the hardest thing to control in your streaming setup is the actual desk, and I'm well aware that most people don't have a sit-stand desk or something that is height adjustable. Thankfully, the only real requirement for a desk in terms of ergonomics is that it allows you to meet the other requirements that we have mentioned. So as long as you have enough depth that your monitor can be an arm's length away, your knees can fit under the desk and still be at that 90 degree angle and your arms naturally rest with your elbows at 90 degrees, then you're all good. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, this by no means covers the vast landscape that is the health of a streamer. We still need to cover topics like exercise, diet, um, mental health, hydration, caffeine. There's so much still to cover and I aim to be covering those in future videos on the Gaming Careers channel. So if you haven't yet subscribed, now would be a great time to make sure that you're notified of all my new uploads. I do want to give a quick disclaimer. I am not a health professional and if after setting up any of these exercises, you're still having issues uh, with injuries or pain, you should of course go and seek uh, advice from a medical professional. Hopefully some of this advice has been useful to you and you've been able to make some changes to the ergonomics of your streaming setup. I'm always interested in seeing your guys' streaming setup, so do tag me in the posts on Twitter. I'm gonna be retweeting some of my favorites, sharing them with the rest of the gaming careers community. Finally, a massive thank you as always to the patrons this month. These people help support the Gaming Careers YouTube channel, allowing me to do this as a full-time job. Uh, and I am forever thankful for their support. Uh, if you are interested in becoming a patron, please do go and check out the page. It's linked in the description below. And subscribers, as always, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.